You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mike Benyonro and Mist Kinsman. Well, I said it's a messy eat, but it's a good eat. Oh, hello, and welcome to Chewing the Cud. This week, I'm joined by Mist Kinsman. Hello, and yes, this week I'm talking about the next big thing after Eurovision for a fan favourite, and we even have a game to play along with. And that's before we get all crafty in Crafty Queens. On screen now you can see our social media. Just search for at the Cud TV. And as people who have popped up in our comments go along the bottom of the screen, it's time for Mike in the Buzz. <laughs> Enjoying yourself there? Oh. Oh, no, excuse me. Sorry. What 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 do you need a poo? <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh. So, our first story this week okay. is about a donkey. A, a donkey. A donkey. Um, it was called Joey. He's 14 years old, mm -hmm. right? And he's down in Devon, right? And he's recently lost his mum. So in November, he lost his mum. And since then, hasn't been eating very well. Oh. Right? Um, so they got the vet out for him, mm -hmm. right? And they realised he had a, a gastric impaction. Ooh, a, is... a dicky tummy donkey. Yes. Okay. Basically, inside his belly, there was a compacted poo that they needed to loosen. Um, and so they did it with um, basically six litres of cola a day. So in 24 litres of cola flushed through a donkey. Oh! Apparently that makes you poo, as we've just experienced. It's just... Um, so that's what that was. That's what that was. That's as close as you get to being a donkey. That's as close um, as I get to being a donkey. But, oh, I, do, do you know the only thing I use Coke for? Cleaning up, washing up. Washing up. Yeah, it gets, it gets all the stains off your pots and pans. It's proper acidic. It's really two good. Two words. Dishwasher is technically one word. Yeah, I'm too tight for oh, that. Pop it. Bit it's of elbow grease. time someone said you're too tight. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> this is true. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just get your hands dirty. Do some hard work. Could have done the same with the donkey. The vet just needed to give his tum a squeeze. I just don't know. <laughs> yeah, um, I've seen all cages, <laughs> great and small. Horses that they do that with. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So if they're pregnant. Have you ever uh, have you uh, uh, seen elephants? They uh, do that for each other. Mm-hmm. They do what? Mm -hmm. Yes, there's some very interesting videos you can find on the internet. Elephants douche each other? Yes, exactly. Why have I not seen this happen? Well, you obviously hasn't, haven't Googled elephant-sized oh, <laughs> elephant fisting. You're right, I haven't ever Googled elephant-sized fisting. <laughs> yes, be careful what you type into Google, kids. It was for an innocent thing, but, yeah. How do the words elephant-sized fisting become an innocent thing? They should have just got this donkey to the local zoo, found an elephant, saved on a lot of coke. Okay, they did more. They they basically did like a gastroscopy and stuff, and a bit of a, a rinse through, shall we say? With with coke. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, but apparently it's because it's fizzy and acidic. It helps to just move things up. Um, it was full fat coke. Sorry, the gallery asking what kind of coke it was. <laughs> Cherry <laughs> flavored. <laughs> like... Caffeine free or not? <laughs> 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 it's quite the concern that the gallery now ordering a lot of coke. Well, they do work in showbiz. <laughs> <laughs> the poor thing. Well, oh. it's better now. Is it one of the ones that gets ridden on the beach? Oh, a beach donkey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. But <laughs> um, well, it gets up to the privacy of his own. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, th I just thought it was a nice story about, you know. Save the donkeys. Save the donkeys and by giving them a coke enema. <laughs> Have you ever used something? Give me flashbacks to a work weekend in the nineties. <laughs> anyway, um, moving on. Have you been to a zoo recently? <laughs> to see the elephants fisting each yeah. other. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I actually haven't been to a zoo in ages. Not been to a phrase. Okay. Oh. Um, well, this is a story about a gentleman in India called Prahad, who's thirty-eight, mm -hmm. who has scaled a twenty-five-foot fence to take a selfie with a lion. Oh. No. Yeah. What kind of idiot is he? Well, um, the, 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 um, 
<laughs> the coroner is looking into the, the remains. Oh, no. To see if he was inebriated or not. Because they think he might have been. I think, I think it's a pretty strong. Did they have to sort the lion out with his impaction? <laughs> <laughs> no, lion didn't eat him, mauled him to death. Oh, so no. basically just played with him till he died. Oh, like a little ball of wool? Like a ball of wool. Oh. A screaming, crying ball of wool. What an angry cat. Yeah. Um, I mean, it does look angry. It's a cage now. Well, I would be if some drunken person jumped over a wall and went, Hey, Poss Katie, take a photo. Possibly drunken. Not sure yet. Oh, we haven't had the results in. The results I think it's months. probably likely. Well, it is the kind of thing you think of doing when you're pissed. Really? Oh, I've done I phoned my ex. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't, you know, I don't climb, I don't go to a zoo because he was on his own in the zoo. Mm -hmm. So he's gone there purposefully to do this. Yes. So it's not a, a, a like random thought. He's gone. You've from... never got hammered and thought, I'm going to cross the cross, cross town to find some big hairy beast to maul me. Yes. Exactly. I go. <laughs> yes. Send location. <laughs> Everybody else in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, so you're planning on going to the zoo for a mold, uh, to be mauled by a hairy beast? I'd probably go for a bear. Okay. Lions and tigers, oh my. Yes, there we go. Anyway, um, and while one of us is going, oh my, um, remember to join us on our social media at The Could TV. And now it's time for our story of the week. Okay. Now, in the morning, mm -hmm. do you wake up happy? Oh, yes. I'm um, very much a morning man. Yes. Good news. That means you're healthy. Oh, good. New research has been done. It doesn't mean that you're aroused in the morning, right? And it doesn't mean, like I thought, it was to stop you rolling out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, that's why I first thought when they started to happen, I go, oh, that'll stop me rolling out of bed. Because you roll over, uh, roll over. It's kind of like a stop, like a kickstand. Well, small kicks, I've, I, I, I've, I've, I seem to have adopted my neighbour's cat. Did you and feed it? I did, Just yeah. I know, it's absolutely Never my own fault. Never put things in buses. They come back for more. Oh. <laughs> um, but cats do love to chase things that they can see moving about underneath um, blankets. Yeah. So, yeah, I had a very interesting wake up one morning. <laughs> I've got a dog, George, who, who likes to play. We call it the duvet game. Mm -hmm. Put a hand underneath and move it and he chases mm -hmm. it. Bounces about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that has happened once. Yeah. Ouch! Well, no, because there's basically this duvet in between and he just goes Nyeh! with it. So, doesn't have sharp claws. He's not a cat. Mm hmm. Yeah. Anyway, um, Kate Molyneux, who's um, a sex toy person mm -hmm. okay, at a company called Lilo, um, said it's not about being turned on. Okay, it's actually called nocturnal, nocturnal, penile tuminescence. 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 What a word! What a, I love that word. <laughs> um, it's basically it's confirming that you've got good um, circulation and that your nerve system is working properly, and it's just it's supposed to happen, but it happens three to five times a night. <laughs> Well, this is the, like um, when I was staying with a, a, fr a, a, fa a friend with a young family, mm -hmm. her, one of her little ones uh, got woken up in the middle of the night um, saying, uh, I need to go get taken to the loo. They couldn't be bothered. They were downstairs drinking with me. So they was like, but I can't. It's, it's... Uh, what's the problem? Um, so they explained what was going on for him because he, he was going through that stage of life okay. that we all remember. Their advice was to stand, stand in the shower and just get it out. <laughs> Lovely. That's how we teach the young ones. <laughs> and that, Do it in the sink. <laughs> and that child, later on in life, will be the one pissing in a wardrobe. Exactly. <laughs> That's going to be a student going, oh, I'm a bit drunk. That's a wardrobe. Yeah. yeah. That's what's going to happen there. But at least we know he's healthy. Exactly, yeah. And they've actually said that if it, sudden, if it stops suddenly, so one day you wake up and you wake up with one every day, and mm -hmm. you don't wake up with one, it's actually time to go and see your GP. Oh, OK. Right? Because it, it, it's a forewarning sign when it stops happening. Mm. Right? So if it, if it gradually drops off, not literally, um, but if it gradually drops off, then that's OK. Right? But if it just suddenly stops, just... Speak. Warning sign. Yeah, it's a warning sign that something's going wrong. But it's not always about STIs either. So people are saying, mm. oh, if it stops, it's about STIs. It's not. Right. Uh, okay. you still get yourself checked, even if you're waking up with a ta-da in the morning, right? Very <laughs> definite. 
Morning. <laughs> you suddenly turned very straight, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's not me at all. Like, yeah. <laughs> You're secretly married with three kids, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. It's not a secret anymore. Thanks for that. <laughs> Did you watch the Rovers game last night? <laughs> oh, oh, no, oh, no, stop, Charles. Oh, no, no. But that's all from the buzz this week. Mm. <laughs> oh, thanks for that, Mike. Um, a very interesting thing, and hopefully we've informed some of you at home to make you feel healthier and better when something goes wrong down there. Well, a pleasure as always. I'm camping up now because I'm a <laughs> butch. Uh, but, but coming after this short break, Miss brings us a look at some celebrity news in the showbiz. You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mist and Mike. Now let's get ready for the showbiz with Mist. So, in the showbiz, we have some television and film news for you today. Okay. Um, now, one of my favourite shows, a few years back it was released, to be fair, was a Feud. Yeah. With um, uh, with the whole story about uh, Bet and Joe mm -hmm. fighting, it was another one of those nice little Ryan Murphy ensemble cast things yeah, going yeah. on. There's oh, another Susan one. Sheridan, I believe. Yes. yes. Yeah. It was absolutely epic and Lovely. beautifully done, and just two bitches going at it. What more could you want, really? So they're following it up with another series. So this time they're going about Truman Capote and his friendships when he was just coming up as a writer and beginning to become famous. Okay. Uh, apparently he got very close with a group of New York socialites. Nice. Yep. And they were nicknamed the Swans. Oh, yeah. Can... And it was fine and dandy. It's New York. You're becoming famous. It's all artsy. There's all these girls with too much money to spend. Mm -hmm. It's going to be fun and fine and dandy until he writes a novel called Answered Prayers about the scandalous lives of wealthy women. Ah. Uh. And this led to them falling out. And the whole series apparently is about that. It is directed by Gus Van Sant, who did My Own Private Idaho. Uh -huh. That's pretty amazing. But the, the list of the cast, I mean, it's a good cast, but just to call out some of them, Tommy Hollander, Demi Moore's going to be in it. Demi Moore? I know. Oh. Yes. Will there um, be an indecent proposal? Well, you think about some people who you've not heard of for a while coming back in this. It's the ensemble cast. You've got people like Russell Tovey in it. You expect him to be in a, a project like that. A gay character he's, is there. He's fantastic. Yeah. He's very, very easy on the eye. And really? I, I, I mean, I think he's an attractive young man. I just don't get as excited as other people do. Well, that's fine. You're not competing with me for him. I'll, I'll, I'll happily... No. Chris Hemsworth, I'll fight you to the death of <laughs> You can have Chris. I'll, I'll have, I'll, yeah. I'll have Justin Tovey. However, here's a name I could... Well, two, actually. Callista Flockhart. OK. Now, I know she's been doing things on American TV, but I've not heard of her since the Ally McBeal, really. Yeah. And here's the big one I can't wait for. Molly Ringwald. Who's Molly Ringwald? Sixteen Candles and all those John Walters movies and um, oh the Breakfast Club kind of yes thing. Oh, yeah. she not dead she's not dead no oh, gummy she was she was um, Archie's mum in, um, in in Riverdale was it I can't do it. Oh, it's a terrible series. It's absolutely dreadful. But she turned up as the mum. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so she's still been acting, just not not well. But this. She's in, she's in this. this okay. I can't wait for seeing that. I That's can tell. Be really yeah. Good. yeah. What if she's a terrible actress now, though? That'll be even more fun to watch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's a really good cast. That's a really good director. It's a really good production behind it. Yes, sometimes Ryan Murphy's a little bit hit and miss sometimes, mm -hmm. but this one I'm really excited for, and the content and the story is just amazing. So that'll be on the FX channel when it's out. Do we know uh, when it's coming out? Um, that I did not take down. Oh. I'm not very well prepared, sorry. Moving on. Um, so, I don't know if when you were growing up you were a fan of, but I certainly was. It's absolutely my tea. Buffy. Yes, and the spin-off Angel. Oh, loved both of them. It was just... I have got very big arms watching those shows. Mm -hmm. Yes, very much so. 
So it's been a little bit of a shame that nothing has, there's been no reboot, there's been no continuation, there's been they no did, spin off did, apart they, from Angel. They did a comic y thing. There's comics, there's audio stuff, there's audio uh -huh. stories out there. It's not died to death because it's loved and it's on repeat all the time. Uh -huh. But there's bubbling away in the background news that there might be a reboot. Back in 2018, Joss uh -huh. Whedon was talking about it, but then Joss Whedon got caught out for doing lots of naughty things and being a terrible person to work with, apparently. So that kiboshed all of that. Uh -huh. But there are now rumours that it might be coming back again. OK. And that's because the production team behind it are very keen and are saying that it's it's not gone away, it's an active project. And do you know who that voice is? I do. You do? I do. Did you read the news article? <laughs> no, not because of that, but because this is something we talked about before before the pandemic. Okay. She was involved in the original season. Of the yeah, well. exactly. Yeah. And I did not know this. Mm -hmm. Dolly Parton helped produce Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I mean, look at her. And now it makes more sense. It does, doesn't it? The musical episode makes a lot more <laughs> sense knowing that... The Charlie idea was that a beautiful blonde who should not just be mistaken for her looks and good high school humour can go around kicking ass and being a competent person. Yes. Perfect. No wonder and she's dying behind and that. coming back to life. Yeah, apparently she did the movie as well, the original thing that was basically a pilot for the TV series, let's be honest. Um, but, yeah, she's, she's behind it all. Oh, I didn't think I could love that woman more. It's going to be sad when she dies. It is. She certainly works more than nine to five. Yeah. Oh, that was a song of hers, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, I'm just very excited. It's still, there's nothing on the table. There's nothing in the can. But the idea that she's behind that, which I thought was amazing news. But... Maybe she, uh, just a little bit of cynical coming out now. Just a okay. little bit cynical. Maybe she's just a bit bored and she says, let's just refloat re this again. In an interview, like, I mean, what's Dolly Parton doing at the minute? She's doing all this charity work. Oh, we're used to her doing that. Okay, Buffy the Vampire Slayer might be coming back. Oh, well, she did invest in all of that Moderna stuff. Was it was it Moderna or was it the other one? No, she did vaccine stuff. Yeah, yeah. so she, she saved the world, man. Helped to. Exactly. Right. But sometimes I think she shouldn't have helped so many people. Um, just saying, some people. Donald Trump. She helped Donald Trump. He's vaccinated, wasn't he? Oh. Yeah, let's not go into the world of selective... Um, yeah. yeah. So we, we could have not necessarily given everybody a vaccine. Anyway. Mm, yeah, but that, that's the same kind of argument the evil people would say. Yeah, I, but using the wrong logic against them doesn't mean it's wrong, you know. <laughs> 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 Moving on before he starts talking about the final solution. <laughs> that's not a final solution. <laughs> actually want to kill these people I'm just saying if they died i wouldn't be upset you saw it here and it's recorded on tape i'll say it to camera <laughs> i would not be sad if donald trump died rushy shudak wouldn't shed a tear just saying <laughs> well, anyway moving on um so we've had a, a big heavy hitting pop star involved in a, a, a fantastic production that's well known well loved and long established mm -hmm. Now for the other end of the scale. Okay. Um, so, do you remember Eurovision last year? Well, and we, our we entry? did so well. Oh, yes, it did so well. It came 25th. Yeah, we were only easy. above Germany. We didn't come last. We, we nearly came last. We didn't come last. We didn't, know. No, which is a triumph for us. Exactly. I mean, it's the a fact huge that we, success. We, we got to host it last year because the people that actually won it were being bombed. Mm-hmm. So we, went, we, we had to wind our necks back in and go back to where we belonged, really. Yeah. yeah. Well, to be fair, um, the song was I Wrote a Song, and it did hit in the UK charts in the top ten, probably for about a week, I can't remember. But it was not all that our, bad a song. All of our Eurovision hits hit top ten in oh, the UK. Because they tend to be quite good hits. They're just not acceptable to the Eurovision market. Um they're, they're, sometimes they're good songs. Sometimes they're good songs, but Eurovision is never about the quality of the song. No, no. And we all know that. We all know that. That's that's very much the truth of it. I've got several songs on my gym playlist that I bang out to like crazy, and it's fantastic. But Bang out at the gym. Um, yeah. You should see me on an elliptical. It's, it's, a, it's a masterpiece. <laughs> elliptical. What's this? 
your little legs go like that. Hi. Anyway, besides the point. <laughs> so our entry was a lovely lass called May Muller. Uh-huh. And she mullered it. Um, she... Well, you'll get there. She, for some reason, parted ways with her uh, label in January. OK. Um, it might be that, uh, for what she said, unfortunately, her artistic direction of churning out hit after hit after hit that didn't hit and didn't hit and didn't hit oh. um, was kind of soul-destroying for her, so she decided to step away. They uh, might have asked her to leave. I don't want to be too mean about it because she's a friend of the gays. So, yes, so we is. want to be kind to her. And she did she did do well in Eurovision as far as I'm concerned. So I, she I, didn't I, come last. <laughs> she didn't come last. That's an achievement. So let's not be too mean to her. But she's decided to move on and go into film. OK. And she's only going, fans? Uh, she, no, not only fans. Okay. We're talking proper film. Oh, OK. We're talking grassroots British cinema. Proper film. OK. It's a film that's going to be called Gassed Up. It's out on the 9th of February, and she plays a lass called Kelly. OK. Now, here's the background to this character, and it's absolutely brilliant. A Londoner who becomes the love interest of the capital's most hesitant street gang member, Ash. As he becomes increasingly morally torn about his involvement in thefts and robberies, Kelly has to make a choice about whether she wants to get roped into this dark world. May says about the character... She knows what she wants. She's not about to go down. Feel sorry for her boyfriend. Exactly. <laughs> I was hoping for more. She's not going to go down. Well, what does she do then? You're going to stop dealing cock or you're not getting a blow job. I thought she was in London. <laughs> I don't do a London accent. Don't do a Northern accent either, apparently. <laughs> And that's everything from the showbiz this week. Well, thanks for that, Mist. Always nice to know that May Muller's doing something interesting. Well, um, stick around, because coming up next, we have our Game of the Week. You're watching Chew in the Cud. And this week, we're going to play everyone's favourite blowing game. That's Ooza Kazoo. And this is for the man who once accidentally forgot to clear his internet browser while on a train. It's missed. Off you pop. <laughs> Thanks for that. See you later. Game of the week. So, while I'm going to be honest with you, tell you trickery, that plays things happen in the studio. Like we learn that some people can't play a kazoo at all in any way, shape or form. So what is it we're doing instead, because you're deficient? I can do many things when I wrap my lips around something, but blow is not one of them, apparently. And I used to be a flautist when I was a kid. Uh, uh -huh. But no, um, as, as, as an adopted northerner, I thought that maybe uh, we could uh, try Take to... Take it back. What? Are you allowed to do that? No, 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 no. I'm here now. I'm not going. I love it. I'm not, don't send me back south. Please don't send me back to London. No, never again. No. Um, as an adopted northerner, uh, I thought we could do a little round of uh, Yorkshire karaoke. OK. Concerned. <laughs> Let's see if you get these. Club singer style in the north. Um, hmm. Let's go for this one. <sighs> Am I really doing this? Honestly. Oh dear. Or okay. learn to play a kazoo. <laughs> I can't play the kazoo. I don't... Mm -mm. All right. Okay. You ready for this? Hmm? Hit me with your rhythm stick. No. What are you doing? Hit me. Hit me, <laughs> hit me with your rhythm stick. <laughs> No, no, no. Um hip me do do hip me do do hip me do do hip me do hip me do do hip me do hip me do do hip me do No idea. All right, we'll we'll, we'll skip. <laughs> Can't just say what was it? So, what, do, you, do you want a clue? No, I want you to give me the answer because uh, the answer was uh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. The theme tune to that. In West Philadelphia, born and raised. <laughs> I couldn't remember the lesson of the lyrics, so that's why I stopped. Yeah, okay, moving on. Yeah, moving on quite quickly. <laughs> oh, this, this is a good... You'll have to get this one. Uh, it's not very seasonal, but we'll go for it. 
You, you're right in thinking a kid's cartoon. Danger Mouse. No, not Danger Mouse. Oh, that's, 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 that's. Seasonal. Well, that was a good clue. Seasonal. Seasonal. Rhubarb and custard. Right, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> you have to tell me what it is if I get it wrong. Otherwise, I'll be in suspenders. <sighs> it was the theme tune to The Snowman. <laughs> We're walking in the air. We're walking through the midnight blue. I nearly got into Rada. But you didn't get in. No, you can tell why. why <laughs> I nearly got into Chris Hemsworth Underpants doesn't mean it's true, you know. Um ooh. Uh just a little bit. Um Gina G, who are just a little bit. I hadn't started yet. Oh, okay. Like, it's not guess it in, 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 in what the first note. What was that old game show? Oh, I can't remember. There's a clue. All right, we'll go for a really simple one. We'll go for a nursery rhyme, all right? Okie dokes. Hey, hip me dip me dip me dip me dip. Hit me with Hey, hip me dip me dip me dip me dip. No? There are five-year-olds that could get that. No, there aren't. Hey, hip 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 it's a nursery rhyme. It's a nursery rhyme. Incy Wincy Spider. No, it's not Incy Wincy Spider. Did, have, have you ever had an ear for music? Yes. <laughs> have you ever been able to play a kazoo? <laughs> 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 have you ever been on a train and got your iPad out? <laughs> I have been on a train and got uh, got my tablet out, yes. Okay. And And... and <laughs> and gone, oh no, I didn't close down that browser for 10 minutes. Right, shall we get the next one on then? Let, let, let's do the next one. <laughs> hey, boo, 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 do you want it again? No, I don't. No. <laughs> the intro, at least. The first couple of lines nail it, to be fair. Did it? Go on, then. Do the intro again. Is it Little Nas X and Old Town Road? I think, I think more early 80s. Men at work, I come from land down under. This, 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 this is a, a performance for the ages. I, I could get a Grammy from this, but it's it just pearls before swine, quite frankly. Um, that was Agadoo by Black Lace. Oh, OK. I can see why you did that. Yeah. You did it weird. It was, I can see why you did that. It was pretty much exactly like the original. Not convinced. No, that's so. <sighs> I keep going for the hard ones because I think they're easier, so that might be the problem. Um, keep going for the hard ones because you think they might be easier. Yeah, because I can't do the easy ones. The ability to not the ability to play a kazoo makes <laughs> sense suddenly. Right. <laughs> That just that's all you need. That's the chorus, and that's it. No, well, it's, it's the intro to the song, to the theme tune. It's a theme tune. Theme tune, and that's yeah. all you've got for me. Hey, 
It's one of the best intros to a kid's TV show of all time. Can you remember any other part of the, th the theme tune? Boop, 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 yeah, I've worked out what it is, and I'm disappointed for you. <laughs> Not because I've worked out what it is, but because you've got you've missed off sunny day, everything's A-OK. -okay. Friendly people, that is where we'll be. Can you tell me how to get how, how to, to get, get to, to the Wombles? The Wombles. The Wombles. No, it's not the Wombles. You... He does this deliberately. <laughs> how to get to Wimbledon Common. See, the dancing is infectious, isn't it? I can yeah. see you wiggling around. See, I've got worms. <laughs> it is infectious, you're right. <laughs> uh, oh, let's do more. Let's all do more theme tunes. They seem to be successful. Okay, let's go with this. The word success has been banded around quite liberally there. <laughs> <laughs> Sesame Street. It's not Sesame Street. It is another street. East Enders, Coronation Street. <sighs> Emmerdale Farm. Go on, sing along if you know it. Don't know it. Can't sing along. <laughs> Neighbours, you puppets. What word were you about to do? You were about to do a swear there, weren't you? <laughs> I was about to do a swear. About to do a swear. Not that kind of show. <laughs> oh, it so very much is. Um, like. But we bleep things. We bleep things because uh, delicate ears. Um, yeah, that, that, that was Neighbours. And beautifully done, even if I do say so myself. The folks at home got it. You are just failing. You, you say the folks at home got it. The folks at home have skipped through this. They're putting. What happened to TiVo? They're it enjoying was a brilliant it. invention. TiVo? No, no, just TiVo. That's all we have time for on this part. So join us after this short break when we get crafty and crafty queens. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. Now we're going to do something involving gloves and not in a way you would expect. It's Crafty Queens. Hello. Yes, um, they've got me doing Crafty Queens. I'm so sorry for what's about to occur. Um, I, I, I've got the tabard look. Isn't tabard? it beautiful? Yes, tabard. tabard. I say to Bard because I'm posh, really. To Bard. Um, but apparently I'm also a crafty queen. Um, yeah, I, I, I've got some crap to work with and uh, we're going to see what we can make. What are we uh, making? Well, I, I, I'm feeling the sea theme. Okay. That's and insulting. you'll probably see in front of you the same kind of miscellaneous rubbish that I have in front of me. The key ingredient being a glove. Now, I have here an oven glove, just a nice old Covent Garden bright orange oven glove. Now, most people would look at this and probably first think I could make a pineapple out of that. But no, pineapple? I've looked at it and I think I could make a whale. Okay. And that's what I'm going to try and attempt to do with this and a load of crap. What have you got in front of you? I have a, a glove with a very rough side. Ooh. For those intimate moments. Um, I actually have two. They, they have, look very nice and form-fitting. Yes. This and really what really. kind of sea creature, prey do you think you could make with those? Um, I think, well, I was going to say an octopus, but it's only got five thingies. Well, you've got two gloves. I do have two. I've got, I was thinking I could just do an octopus that's been in a fight and lost some legs. <laughs> well, um, you should have some other materials like I have. Socks that haven't been used yet. Yep, some unused socks, uh -huh. which is I a said, bit disappointing. Because okay. 
Um, and I've got some felt, uh, um, what do they pipe used to cleaners. call these in pipe cleaners? Little pipe, pipe cleaners, cleaners. And some bally things and some feathers. And some feathers. Yeah. And some, oh, cool, things are falling down. You should also have some key equipment such as a glue gun, mm -hmm. which is hopefully warming up, uh, a pair of scissors, pair of scissors, uh -huh. and uh, a pen. Okay. So we can see what we can do with that. Okay, cool. So, am I am I just allowed to do what I want now? Uh, you can free ball it because uh, <laughs> you you have very different gloves to me, and um, obviously we wear a different size of glove. We do. I'm, I'm just excited that I'm being allowed to, to do what I want. Well, you know, uh, Lee usually does this section, and he's a big meanie and very very strict. He is uh, very strict. Whereas this is art. Just go crazy, kids. Okay. Cool. Yay. Um, yeah, well, but talk, talk us through what you're so, doing. What, I, what's going to be your first step? The first thing I'm going to do is, is take one of my wank socks mm -hmm. um, and make it into a head. It's a nice little white sock. You're going to fold it up into a ball. I'm going to make a ball out of it. Mm -hmm. I need a head for my octopi. Ooh, very fancy. Yeah. I'm going to take one of these and I'm going to take it home and use it later. Thanks. Um, yeah, I, I, I think I could stuff out my 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 little uh, glove a little bit. I think that's a very good idea. Okay. Good. I'm going to take scissors to mine. I'm going to shove it right down the end. You know, just get it right, right in there. Stuff it around. So, I, are you <laughs> arty when you're not in the studio? I am quite arty, uh, but um, I, I I have. Different, uh, different aims. <laughs> you know what? What are your aims when you're not in it? <laughs> I, I play a lot of Dungeons and Dragons. I'm a big fat nerd. Uh, so I make little miniatures and I paint them and, and I make little bits of scenery for them and trees and things. That's cute. But that's not what we're doing today. Now we're making big fish out of gloves. Yeah. I, I have played Dungeons and Dragons in the past. You have played Dungeons have. and Dragons. Did yeah. you enjoy it? It's all right. The wine was good. The what? The wine was good. The wine was good. Yeah. Did you I, get drunk playing? I, I took wine dragons. with me. Um, it was when I was a student. Mm -hmm. and I was, I was with friends with a, a girl who used to collect Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Oh. Um, but yeah, so I, I was invited around to a Dungeons and Dragons party. Mm -hmm. And I went, that sounds dull. I'm taking wine, and got very drunk before it started. I, I usually find it's quite difficult to play a game of Dungeons and Dragons when you're pissed. It was. It wasn't easy. No. Um. But also, I found out she wasn't very good. She wasn't very good at playing Dungeons and Dragons. How can you be bad at playing Dungeons and Dragons? <coughs> she was just dull. Ah, that'll do it. It's meant to be a fun game. Yeah. Um, the phrase I actually used was dull as shit, this. Oh, wow. Because I was drunk. And <laughs> a bottle of wine. I mean. Well, it's supposed to be a fun, amusing game that usually descends into bum jokes and, and fart noises. Um, well, that's how my games usually go, to be fair. Uh, if it's a maths exercise, it's, it's usually quite dull, yeah. It's a what exercise? A maths exercise. Or well, a maths exercise. Can I have a sword that adds plus three and then does doodle flip and then I'll row for that where I've got a 20% chance oh. of to do? Very, very dull if you play it like that. Okay, yeah. Which that's some people do. But that's the kind of thing it was back in the day. I started playing, and there's a photograph evidence of when it was when I was playing Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay um, back in the 90s. And some of the people I play Dungeons and Dragons with now weren't even born then. It's terrifying. It is terrifying. I, ha I, I in my day job, I hire people, mm -hmm. um, and when I'm having conversations, they're saying, "Going, what's your date of birth?" And it starts with a two. <laughs> They're not real people. They're not adults. They can't have jobs. Yeah. Not how that works. Fortunately, it is. So I have learned something very interesting today. Mm -hmm. Can't use a glue gun to glue material together under tension. No, you have to press without it. Without burning yourself. You have to go, mm. Well, yeah, dude, I did say earlier, be careful. I was being careful. It failed as a, as a carefulness. So I'm just going to just take it a It failed just... or you failed. Same thing. Basically, yes. Thank you very, very much. Uh, the gallery have, have given me um, an idea of what, an idea about what the hell a killer whale looks like. 
I really didn't pay attention to all of those natural history um, things. David Attenborough is spinning in his grave. But uh, he's not dead yet, is he? Yeah, he'll be dead soon. Well, by the time this goes out, he's probably carked it. Bless him. He might already be dead. We've just not. No one's told anyone. Do you know what? He's probably because a lot of it's voiceover, and he's got that much material. Hey, They've I probably know. just edited it from previous series, and he's been dead for twenty years already. Anyway. This is less being crafty and clever and more me just colouring in. OK. But I'm giving it a go. Are you going to give your octopi a name? Bernie, because it keeps burning me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yours has been quite successful. That, that, that takes me back to Finger Mouse when I was a kid. I, 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 the, look, look, this is as far as it's going to go because you're not going to see the blowhole. It has no physical use in the whole thing. I'd just be cutting it to my finger. But. <laughs> just. Ow. Is this animal cruelty? I was once considered for Rada. Considered? I got a call back. <laughs> I didn't get. I didn't get a, a call back after the call back, but I did get a call back. You got a call. Did they think you were the cleaner? <laughs> and you've missed a bit. You've missed a bit. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> We'd love to see you again because this this floor's a nest. <laughs> <laughs> there, right, right. Actually, I'm not too too dissatisfied with this, considering what I've got to work with. Um, but here we have. <laughs> a, pie, a, a killer whale that's eaten too many pineapples. I bet it's cum tastes lovely. I think I bet it's cum tastes lovely. I think it's an outro. <laughs> <sighs> and as I'm contractually obliged to say this, if you can't get any peen or any vagine or anything in between, be a crafty queen. <laughs> you've just done that and you've got an erect nipple now. <laughs> <laughs> you've turned yourself on with a glue puppet that you've made. <laughs> it both got, it's not cold. It's not cold, everyone. Just saying. It's quite warm up here. Okay. <laughs> Back to the nipple. Just saying. <laughs> so that's almost the end of the show. Just remember to join us on our social media at the Cud TV. Thank you for watching and enduring. See you soon. Bye. That's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, getting close to your nipple. Just saying. You haven't. It's a fetish. It's not a fetish. I'm not sure.